I'm Mark Gaskill with Diamond Mobile Paint and Coatings. I am an application technician with our tech services group out of Orange City, Iowa. Today we're going to go over a pressure pot, how to set your fluid pressure and atomizing air, and check your uh, spray patterns. So first thing that we need to do is load the pressure pot with our material. For this I'm just going to place a gallon can right in the pot. Go ahead and tighten up the nuts. Finger tight is more than good on this. You do not need to put a wrench on it of any kind or pliers. So now that we got that done, we're ready to put air to the pressure pot. One thing that you always want to do is check your, your air valves, your regulators, and make sure that the nuts on them are loose before you put air to it. Otherwise, if they're actually in and there's pressure going into the vessel, when you put air to it, it's going to splash and it's just going to make the, the top of your pressure pot full of paint and dirty and take more time to clean up. So what we'll do now is get our fluid stream set. Bump that up a little bit to get the fluid going through the line. We got fluid there, so we'll back this off. Let some pressure out of the pot. Check our fluid stream. Right now what we're doing is we're looking for eight to 12 inches of a straight stream before it starts to crown down. That would be good for most urethanes in our industrial coatings plus our single component air dry stuff. And again, it is with full trigger on the gun. So now we'll go ahead, set our atomizing air. We'll start off with that around the 45 PSI range. Always check your atomizing air with your gun in the air position. That looks good. So now what we'll do is we'll check the, check the pattern on the gun. So now that you got your fluid pressure and your atomizing air set at your pressure pot, now all you basically want to do is just go ahead and spray a piece of cardboard or paper with your gun. Should have at 12 inches away, you want a 12 inch pattern. So that's just a little bit wide. So the reasoning for getting a good pattern set is that way when you're painting your part, your 50% overlap, you're going to have a nice consistent coating. So by the time you set your viscosity, get your fluid pressure set and your atomizing air set, it all goes as one group then to, to get a good paint job, consistent coating, and uh, overall gloss of the, uh, of the coating because everything is consistent. So. Uh, now that we've got that done, we can go over a few other things. Keep in mind, if you're painting something smaller, like I did there, you can, you can make your pattern smaller. When you're painting a smaller piece, you always want to make sure that you're overlapping each side by about an inch. And when you come to the end of your part, don't be afraid to paint out past it just a little bit. Instead of getting a light spot on the end, then uh, then that'll just be rework on that. So, uh, but anyhow, this is your fluid, your fan pattern. Uh, we always check fluid at full trigger. Just set it at the pot. If you, when you're checking your spray pattern, and there's an issue with your pattern that doesn't look right, basically at that time. Just loosen up your retaining ring, spin your air cap 180 degrees, and try it again. 
If that fixes the problem, then there is something obstructing the airway. If it doesn't fix the problem and it follows the air cap, take the air cap off, try cleaning it, put it back on, check it again. If it fixed it, it was obviously dirty. If it doesn't fix it, the air cap is probably damaged at that point. Get a different air cap. If it still doesn't fix it, then at that time, your needle and nozzle is either wore out or damaged. So that's when you need to rebuild the gun. So now we'll uh, go back and show you how to clean the pressure pot and the lines. Now that we're finished painting our parts for the day, now we can go through and uh, flush out our pressure pot. Always make sure to back the pressure off the regulators. Go ahead, unhook your air. Release the clamps. time we'll go ahead and put some solvent in the pot. I like to use MEK because it cuts a lot quicker. Throw about a quart in there. Secure the lid on the pot once more. Make sure those are loose. Put air to the pot, trigger on, and adjust your fluid pressure. So with doing this, you want to run your product out till it changes from, uh, in this case, black that we painted, whatever color you're painting to a clear solvent. Then at that time, your lines are flushed and your gun is cleaned. So now that we have clean solvent coming through, what we'll do is we'll go over the day-to-day -day cleaning of the gun and the weekly cleaning of the gun and the pressure pot. Once you're done spraying for the day or for the job, what we're gonna go over is a daily cleaning of the paint gun and the weekly cleaning of the paint gun. Basically the daily is just pull the air cap off, take the brush, Clean the gun up, dry that, clean the air cap, clean the outside of the gun up, and then it's ready for next shift or the next paint job. If you are using a single component material and you leave your paint in the pressure pot in the lines, I would suggest that once a week you flush the lines clean with solvent. Uh, when you're done doing that, at that time, take your air cap off, Put that in some solvent, pull your trigger back, pull your nozzle off. That goes in the solvent. Then you pull your needle out, that goes in the solvent. Take a brush, clean the gun up, wipe the gun down, and then start to reassemble the gun. Needle out, dry off. Air cap out. Always inspect your parts as you're cleaning. And then your nozzle. 
When you go to put the gun back together, put your nozzle in first, snug up with the wrench that the manufacturer sent with the gun on the needle. Always get some spray gun lube put on there. Move it around. If you keep your needle clean and greased up, it will not stick on you. Put that back into place. Put the trigger depth nut in, get it started, and then pull into full trigger. Screw that in. Once you feel it start to push your trigger ahead, that's at full trigger. Now at this time, put your air cap back on. Don't ever leave the air cap off while the gun is sitting around because that protects your needle and your nozzle. So with that being said, we're done for the cleanup of the gun. Another thing to keep in mind is never submerse your gun in thinner. Basically what that is gonna do, it's going to wear out your, your seals prematurely and then you're just gonna have to rebuild your gun a lot sooner than it needs to be. So always keep your equipment clean and in good working order. If you see something that's damaged or wore out, please let your supervisor know and they will uh, take care of you to get your gun back in working order. If you have any questions on this uh, training video, please give myself or a Diamond Vogel representative a call. Our contact information will be at the end of the video. Thank you for your time.